settle, please, and so that we can start. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished heads of delegations. Uh, we will begin our work uh, this morning again with an update from uh, the Committee on Credentials. And I now invite the delegation from uh, the uh, the delegation uh, from uh, Botswana to to give us a report on their Committee on Credentials. Botswana. Thank you, Chairperson. Very good morning to you all. Following my earlier reports made to the Regional Committee in my capacity as Chairperson of the Committee on Credentials, I have the honor to report that Swaziland has now submitted formal credentials. Therefore, a total of 41 member states have submitted formal credentials, which are in conformity with Rule No. 3 of the Rules of Procedure of the Regional Committee for Africa. I thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Botswana. Are there any comments on this report? Uh, I see none. I take it that the report is accepted. Thank you. We will now go back to agenda item 15 on the regional framework of, for integrating essential NCD services in primary health care. Document AFR stroke 67 stroke 12. We will now invite uh, comments from the Secretariat as already members have already gone through this. Comments are made uh, with the Secretariat. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Ministers. On behalf of the Secretariat, I would like to thank Honorable Ministers and Delegates for the very useful inputs and comments yesterday uh, we have taken note of all the advice and all the comments that you provided and uh, we will uh, refine the document and we noted the overwhelming support for the integration of uh, essential NCD services in primary health care um, there are issues around maybe looking uh, at some of the milestones, especially on availability of medicines in primary health care facilities. Um, there's overwhelming support for the integration of uh, NCDs with uh, other services such as HIV, adolescent health, reproductive health, and others. And the need for data uh, on non-communicable diseases and, and to the need for support in conducting step surveys, and also the need for research. Um, there was also uh, some suggestion to include um, other uh, conditions that are very prevalent in the African region, including sickle cell, anemia, mental health. Um, Honorable Chairperson, um, I would like to request your permission to give the floor to uh, my colleague from headquarters, uh, Dr. Etienne Krug, the Director for Non-Communicable Diseases, injury, uh, Violence and Injuries. Your permission. Okay, permission granted. Can we hear from you? Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, delegates. Uh, we're delighted this topic was discussed on the agenda of the Afro-Regional Committee yesterday, as we've heard yesterday afternoon, but also in the context of the discussion on, on the GPW yesterday morning, NCDs are on the rise in Africa, and it was good to hear in the discussion how many actions are already being taken uh, to address NCDs. Uh, throughout the different member states of the region. It was clear also that the response needs to be a combination of prevention, early detection, treatment, all of that based on solid data. HQ, of course, stands ready to support our colleagues with the implementation of this framework and wants to congratulate our colleagues in AFRO for the development of this important document. Maybe from the global perspective, I'd like to mention two or three issues.
first a reminder that the World Health Assembly endorsed Appendix 3, the so-called Appendix 3, which is uh, the list of the most cost-effective interventions to tackle NCDs. In our view, this should be the agenda for the future, and implementing those cost-effective interventions should be the priority. They're well reflected also in the framework that was adopted or that is to be adopted here in the, this regional committee. In that context, we've also launched two initiatives. First of all, the Global Hearts Initiative, which aims at tackling cardiovascular disease and particularly hypertension at the primary healthcare level, and the Joint Program on Cervical Cancer, which also aims to improve detection at primary healthcare level of cervical cancer in order to treat it more earlier and uh, get uh, many lives saved. We believe that those are two low-hanging fruits. They've already started implementation of these initiatives in Ethiopia, Uganda for the first, and Tanzania for the cervical cancer one. And we hope to see them rolled out in the rest of the region and the world in the coming years. Some of you mentioned rheumatic heart disease. Again, the executive board discussed rheumatic heart disease and the first ever resolution of the World Health Assembly could be adopted next year on this topic, which we hope will give a boost to action on that topic as well. And finally, Mr. Chairman, all of you have been invited to the conference that the President of Uruguay is organizing with support of WHO on uh, 18 to 20 October this year, and we hope to see many of you there to discuss next steps in the agenda to ad address NCDs. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Secretariat, uh, distinguished delegates. Is the regional committee ready to adopt the actions proposed in document AFR stroke 67 stroke 12 on the regional framework for integrating essential NCD services into primary health care, taking into account the comments made? It is so decided. Well, I will now pass uh, the floor to Ms. Eliza Jobet to make a statement on behalf of the Union for International Cancer Control. Ms. Jobet, you have the floor. Thank you, Honorable Chair, Honorable Ministers and Delegates. Um, also from the UICC side, we highly welcome that NCDs are escalated to this level and, in, and included in the regional framework. And thank you again for the opportunity to deliver this statement on behalf of the Union for International Cancer Control, a membership organization representing 159 cancer organizations across the African region. Now, cancer is the second leading cause of mortality globally. And in the Afro region alone, cancer accounted for over 455 deaths annually already in 2012. And this reflects the growing global inequity in cancer mortality as the majority, 75% of global cancer deaths occur in low and middle income countries, which are ill-equipped to cope with the escalating burden of the diseases. In 2010, the total annual economic cost of cancer was estimated at 1.16 trillion US dollars, a threatening health budgets and economies at all income levels, as well as posing potentially catastrophic financial risks to individuals and their families. In the light of this, the UICC warmly welcomed the 2017 Cancer Resolution, which was championed by member states across the African region. Now, significant progress has been made regionally to lay the foundations for effective cancer control programs. The number of countries with national cancer control plans rose from 30% to 75% between 2010 and 2015. But now, as countries move to implementation, it is critical that primary health care workers are trained on cancer basics, are able to inform communities on risk factors, signs and symptoms, 
and expedite referral to, uh, for accurate and timely diagnosis and treatment, a key role in significantly reducing the economic and health burden of cancer. Now, early detection services for the region's highest impact cancers, most notably breast, cervical, and childhood leukemias, are deemed highly cost-effective by the World Health Organization in the updated Appendix 3 to the NCD Global Action Plan. As such, we urge member states to integrate these early detection services into primary health care packages to improve health literacy of our African communities and to improve equitable access for the, to the opportunity for early diagnosis and successful treatment. This investment has the potential to yield rapid and significant returns economically, as well as in terms of reporting against the 2025 goals and improving the survival and well-being across the region. The UICC stands ready to support you in these next steps. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jobet. Uh, now take, I now invite Dr. Zulke to make a statement on behalf of the World Heart Foundation, CN. No. Okay. If she's not in, then uh, let us continue our work with Agenda Item 16 on the status report on the implementation of the decade of action for road safety in the Africa region. Document AFR stroke 67 stroke 13. I will now give the floor once again to Dr. Stephen Shongwe, Acting Director NCDs, to introduce this document. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Ministers, Regional Director, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Secretariat, I have the honor to introduce document AFR RC 67-13 entitled Status Report on the Implementation of the Decade of Action for Road Safety in the African Region. The document summarizes the progress made in the implementation of the Global Plan for the Decade of Action for Road Safety 2011-2020 in the WHO African Region. It identifies key issues and challenges in achieving the targets and proposes priority actions. Road traffic crashes in the African region have increased from approximately 188,000 in 2001 to 247,000 in 2013, representing a 32 percent increase. Road injury death rates in the African region are the highest in the world at 26.6 per 100,000 of the population compared to the global average of 17.4 deaths per 100,000. Five out of the 10 countries with the highest road traffic deaths globally are in the African region. Half of all road traffic deaths are amongst pedestrians. Cognizant of the high burden of traffic, um, road traffic crashes, the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 64-255, which proclaimed 2011-2020 the Decade of Action for Road Safety. The Decade of Action for Road Safety has five pillars, namely road safety management, safer roads and mobility, safer road users, safer vehicles, and post-crash response. WHO focuses primarily on building capacity amongst um, road users, uh, influencing the behavior of road users, and uh, also uh, post-crash response. Um, motorized road transport system has expanded significantly uh, over the past two decades. But while this may be good in terms of providing transport, um, it also contributes to the uh, death rate but also contributes to carbon emissions, uh, polluting the environment, and contributes to uh, uh, chronic respiratory diseases and other non-communicable diseases. Now, the document also identifies challenges 
and the challenges include weak legislation on risk factors for road safety. And some of the risk factors for road safety include drinking, uh, drink driving, um, uh, uh, using alcohol. Alcohol actually is one of the major risk factors contributing to a, a large number of deaths uh, on our roads. Speeding, lack of uh, motorcycle helmets, um, non-use of uh, seat belts, um, and, and other challenges. There may be, in some countries, legislation exists, but it is um, inadequate. And sometimes um, the enforcement uh, is, not, uh, is not done. Um, Other challenges include inadequate multisectoral coordination of road safety activities, um, the low level of investment in road safety interventions, um, and then another challenge, the poor data systems for reporting of road uh, traffic adverse events. The document proposes actions for member states which include um, developing and implementing national road safety plans and enforcing legislation on risk factors, including um, alcohol and other substances, implementing minimum ve international vehicle standards, improving the quality of road safety data, and optimizing the care of victims, you know, improving on the post-crash response. Um, but I think more importantly also, fast-tracking implementation of existing commitments, including the Brasilia Declaration, um, and, and developing multisectoral coordination to improve road safety uh, uh, activities. The regional committee is invited to consider and endorse the actions proposed in the document. I thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Shongwe. Um, today, we are going to run this committee differently. We do not have much time, but the time we have can be used maximally valuably. So, we are going to insist that member states stick to a maximum of three minutes. And it means those three minutes you really have to just hit the points that are most pertinent. And we are going to make sure that the legal advisor advises me legally now that it's three minutes. And we stop you at three minutes. We really have a very long, long agenda. So you will bear with me when I'm absolutely ruthless with you. Uh, I'm your colleague, but uh, I'll just, uh, I'm just chairing you today, so I will enforce that. So with that, um, I would like to hear comments from the floor. Honorable members, yes, Nigeria, United Republic of Tanzania, Cameroon, Cape Verde, Senegal, Lesotho, Angola, Cote d'Ivoire, Kenya, Guinea, right. South Africa, Liberia. Yes. I think I think that's it. So three minutes and please legally count those three yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. I'll start with Kenya. Honorable Gilgit from Kenya. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kenya wishes to take this opportunity to commend WHO for the comprehensive report on this agenda item. Road 
traffic injuries are a major public health problem in Kenya. Available data shows that approximately 3,000 people perished in 2016 following road crashes. It is important to note that approximately a third of all the deaths on the country's roads are among pedestrians. Through these figures, though these figures represent a reduction of close to 5% compared to the previous year, it is alarming and unacceptable as these deaths and injuries are completely preventable. The Government of Kenya, through an Act of Parliament, established the National Transport and Safety Authority in 2013 as the lead agency on road safety issues. Following the establishment of the authority and in implementation of most pillars of the Decade of Action on Road Safety, significant progress on reducing the fatalities due to road traffic crashes continue to be realized. This has been as a result of implementation of various initiatives, such as random checks by police, uh, road safety officers and road safety officers, use of breathalyzers, uh, installation of speed cameras, surveillance on our roads, and regular mandatory inspection of public service vehicles and commercial vehicles to ensure safer vehicles. The authorities are also enforcing strict legislative and punitive measures to curb over speeding and drunk driving and cell phone use while driving. The country is working with stakeholders to finalize the National Road Safety Action Plan, which envisions enhanced multi-sectoral coordination in road safety between law enforcement, transport, health sector, and other stakeholders. The government is also working to build the capacity of first responders and provide trauma services in the national and county hospitals in efforts to strengthen the post-response response. Mr. Chairman, I want to be very brief. Uh, the Constitution of Kenya also guarantees uh, citizen access to emergency treatment in both private and public hospitals. Uh, we support the proposed action areas to fast track the implementation of the Decade of Action in, within the African region, and we request the WHO and partners to, me, to support member states develop and coordinate and conduct appropriate health promotion and social marketing campaigns to raise awareness to all road users and all aspects of road safety. And finally, we urge WHO to also facilitate sharing of evidence-based approaches for preventing road traffic crashes, deaths, and injuries. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Well done, Kenya. I, I think if we can rush to what you are recommending, you know, just summarize yourself and then rush to what you are recommending so that we don't leave the more, most important part. Cape uh, Verde. Cabo Verde did not ask. Uh, Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Regional Director, uh, Honorable Ministers. Nigeria would like to share its experience. Of course, uh, first of all, appreciating the presentation of this uh, very important document, particularly the uh, Decade of Action. Nigeria has the highest burden on uh, road traffic uh, casualties in, in, uh, in, in the region. And uh, to address this uh, problem, a special police unit called the Federal Road Safety Corps was created, which we recommend. And the uh, mandate of this uh, core is to manage road traffic. And we are proposing that they also manage vehicle, vehicle integrity and uh, road user integrity and behavior. They are also responsible for post-crash response. And Nigeria has done a lot to increase the number of uh, trauma centers and also first aid response, response centers near uh, very busy highways. We are also working hard to, uh, on, on data collection and collation in order to be able to have accurate uh, data on uh, road uh, traffic injuries. Thank you. I think this is very, very good. Um, Tanzania? United Thank Republic. you, Mr. Chairman. The United Republic of Tanzania commends various efforts in the world in implementing the Decade of, the, of, decade of Action for Road Safety 2011-2020. Tanzania joined other member states to collect and submit road safety data after every three years through the coordinator in traffic police. Efforts are also ongoing to improve road safety data management through establishment of road accident information system. Tanzania Police Force is continuing implementing junior patrol and education programs through radio and television. Mr. Chairperson, we thank WHO for selecting Tanzania to implement Bloomberg Road Safety Initiative. 
this complements various health sector efforts to implement road safety activities in our country. We started implementing the road safety initiative since April 2015. Road safety activities are more coordinated through National Coordinating Committee and uh, also we conduct legal and media development fellowship programs and are observing better media reporting on road safety issues and a better understanding of the road traffic acts. We reviewed road safety related laws and media reporting systems and gaps that were identified have been addressed and currently we are advocating key authorities to amend the traffic, uh, Road Traffic Act of 1977. We are advocating for the development of a comprehensive road safety plan which will facilitate implementation of decade of action at country level. Engagement of parliamentary network was done through creating awareness and signing declaration with four parliamentary committees. Mr. Chairperson, despite the ongoing efforts, the number of casualties is still rising. Most of the casualties result from motorcycle crashes and the common injuries are head injuries which require timely and high technologies to prevent mortality and disabilities. The country is planning to establish emergency medical services and a special modality of securing funds for its functions. Mr. Chairperson, it's One high minute. time we join efforts and prevent road traffic accidents. Enforcement of road traffic laws can significantly reduce the number of traffic injuries, especially if they address key risk factors such as avoid, avoid speeding, avoid drinking, while driving, emphasizing on child restraint, use of helmets, seat belts to both passengers and drivers. With those remarks, we thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, well done, the United Republic of Tanzania, Cameroon, followed by Lesotho. I didn't raise the Cameroon flag, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then, so it's Lesotho followed by Angola. Did not Lesotho did not raise either? Okay. Oh. Thank you, sir. My system was not switching on. I thank you for the opportunity. As the Kingdom of Lesotho, we commend the agenda item number 16 on road safety. In Lesotho, as a developing nation, we notice year-on-year -year increases in road traffic accidents, especially in the post-20,000 20, uh, period, involving mostly pedestrians and motor vehicle to motor vehicle accidents. We also note a rapid increase in the demand for transport in all its kind in general and especially personal demand for family transport. In conjunction with that demand is the demand for is, is an increase in household income which leads to an inevitable desire for ownership of personal vehicles. And there is evidence of need to strengthen the combined demand for personal transport while there is an increase to personal finance for purchasing motor vehicles, while there is also poor legislation to enforce that those who buy motor vehicles have the necessary skills to operate them on public roads. The Kingdom of Lesotho therefore recommends strengthening driver's licensing mechanisms so that the people who are handling motor vehicles on public roads are very competent in that regard. One minute. There is need for improved driver and pedestrian education with a view to prevent use of alcohol and use of recreational drugs on public roads. There is need for the enforcement of the road traffic laws. And finally, for the Ministry of Health, there is need to promote collaboration between the two ministries of health and the Ministry of Public Works and Transport. We support this agenda item. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Lesotho. Angola, followed by Cote d'Ivoire.
Obrigado, Sr. Presidente. O, as consequências dos acidentes de aviação são inúmeros, significando não só prejuízos sociais e econômicos elevados, mas também uma sobrecarga para o serviço de saúde. Face a esta situação, o governo de Angola prevê reforçar a prestação dos cuidados médicos a pessoas vítimas de acidente de aviação e de trabalho, assim como as pessoas com deficiências motores causadas pelas causas acima referidas. Tendo criado o Conselho Nacional de Aviação e Ordenamento do Trânsito, com um caráter multissectorial para dar uma resposta mais global aos desafios de segurança e prevenção rodoviária, incluindo o desenvolvimento de ações de caráter cívico educativo. Senhor Presidente, o relator do Comitê Regional aponta os problemas e desafios para a África neste domínio. Na nossa opinião, deveríamos desmembrar do primeiro problema referente à legislação inadequada para os fatores de risco de segurança rodoviária. A questão inerente ao incumprimento da legislação e à fraca sensibilização dos condutores e peões, pois, se assim fizermos, poderíamos direcionar melhor os esforços e os recursos para este aspecto muito importante, tendo em conta que a legislação adequada é apenas parte da nossa solução. No que concerne as medidas propostas, tendo em conta a magnitude do problema para alguns dos países da região, seria importante que os padrões mínimos internacionais para os veículos fossem amplamente disseminados na região e que se definisse um cronograma para a implementação das medidas propostas. Salvaguardados os aspectos que referenciamos uh, acima, minute, Angola apoia a aprovação do relatório. Muito obrigado. Uh, thank you, Angola. A Côte d'Ivoire, followed by Guinea. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Côte d'Ivoire félicite et remercie le secrétariat pour le rapport, la qualité du rapport qui a été soumis. La sécurité routière demeure une préoccupation importante en Côte d'Ivoire, eu égard à l'impact négatif sur la charge de travail des hôpitaux. Pour noter un exemple bien précis, le CHU de Pougon qui est à l'entrée de la ville d'Abidjan reçoit plus de tiers de tous les accidentés, ce qui accroît son, sa charge de travail. Par rapport à cela, des mesures ont été prises dans le pays, entre autres la création d'un office de sécurité routière, l'introduction de l'éducation de la sécurité routière dans les programmes scolaires, la mise en place d'un fonds de garantie automobile, la mise en œuvre de programmes gouvernementaux d'appui au renouvellement du parc auto, entre autres. Mais malgré ces avancées notables, La conduite des actions de sécurité routière se heurte à la difficulté, à savoir l'absence de cadres formels de concertation entre les divers acteurs et partenaires du système de sécurité routière, comme l'a noté le rapport, l'absence de financement adéquat et pérenne des projets et programmes de sécurité routière, le vieillissement du parc auto national et la persistance de l'informel dans l'organisation du secteur des transports routiers. La Côte d'Ivoire se félicite des progrès réalisés dans la mise en œuvre du plan d'action 2011-2020 pour la sécurité routière et sollicite l'appui de l'OMS pour relever les défis résiduels et prendre note du, du présent rapport. Elle encourage le comité régional à poursuivre ses, ses, ses appuis techniques et financiers au pays pour la mise en œuvre du plan stratégique national. La Côte d'Ivoire soutient le rapport et invite les autres États membres à l'adopter. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Côte d'Ivoire. Um, Guinea, followed by South Africa. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Guinée félicite le secrétariat pour la qualité du document. Euh, dans notre pays, le nombre d'accidents de circulation ne cesse de croître malgré toutes les mesures envisagées. Cette situation... nouveau phénomène, euh, celui de taxi-moto qui embrasse
envahi maintenant tout le pays et qui est devenu même le premier moyen de transport pour l'ensemble du pays. À côté de ce nouveau phénomène, il y a malheureusement l'état des routes et des véhicules qui rentrent également en jeu. Plusieurs textes réglementaires ont été votés au niveau du pays concernant des sanctions pénales sur les infractions du code de la route, la limitation des vitesses, sur la consommation de l'alcool, le port du casque protecteur, la ceinture de sécurité, le téléphone au volant euh, et surtout, euh, tout récemment, l'interdiction d'importer des véhicules usagés de plus de 8 ans au niveau du pays. Euh, plusieurs activités également ont été réalisées euh, au niveau du pays. Actuellement, chaque année, on a les statistiques sur les accidents de, de la route. Des activités de sensibilisation sont également conduites dans, dans le pays. Et un observatoire national de la sécurité routière vient d'être euh, mis en place. Là, donc, avec beaucoup... Euh, de joie que la Guinée soutienne l'ensemble des recommandations proposées et invite euh, le comité régional euh, à approuver le document. Je vous remercie. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Guinea. Uh, now it's South Africa, one of the biggest timekeepers, and followed by Liberia. No, chairperson. I've got a suspicion that the stopwatch you are using is faulty, it's moving too fast. So um, I'm putting my own stopwatch here, Chairperson. I don't want to be cheated. Chairperson, thank you very much. Let me also thank the Secretariat. Chairperson, in South Africa, it has been researched <coughs> that 70% of total, in 70% in of total accidents, <coughs> alcohol is a factor. But in 50% of accidents that lead to death, alcohol is a factor. Even this half of road traffic deaths which occur among pedestrians, it was found that it's mostly drunk and pedestrian, not all of them, which means alcohol plays a very, very significant role. Uh, I, I'm not saying all the other issues we have put here. Even speeding is related to alcohol and uh, you know, the, the other issues that we have put here, but I'm saying 70% already is alcohol, so I want to make a proposal. But before that, Chairperson, I always complain back at home. After every major holiday, the Minister of Transport call a press conference to release the figures of how many people died during the holidays, whether it's down or up and all that. It usually happens after Christmas or after Good Friday. And I complain because while death is painful, but for us as Minister of Health, it goes beyond death. There are lots of people who are lying in hospital with permanent brain injury, with paraplegia. We have to take care of them. They are never mentioned, and I want to propose that in this background, even at UN level, they mention only 188 deaths, which increased to 247. But the biggest burden for a Minister of Health is those who are alive and paralyzed, brain damage, not going to work, etc., etc. One minute. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. not, not according to my stopwatch. Yes, so I propose that the second paragraph there after one should be about these injuries, how they affect them, how they affect us. My second proposal, Chairperson, actually, UNISA, University of Southern Africa, has, has made a study, they said, for every one death, there are eight people who end up in hospital. And those are never mentioned in the statistics. I propose to also include that. So my biggest proposal is, the biggest win here is if we win the battle against alcohol. As ministers of health, if we can make these laws on regulation of alcohol, we will have won 70% of the battle. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm still left with 20 seconds. <laughs> You have done extremely well. <laughs> Thank you, South Africa. Liberia followed by Senegal. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, we 
low traffic, specific mortality and mobility rates will continuously affect the overall development to most of our countries in the region. As clearly elucidated by the Secretariat, this exponential increment places a major challenge on the overall health status of our countries, most especially those of us that have just begun to invest into roads construction without enforcing the legislations on road safety and without the appropriate medical facilities to cater to those that are injured, the burden of long-term care and its impact on families are worth mentioning. Per the document, Liberia is one of the 16, the 16 member countries listed that does not have no classification system for non-fatal injuries. It is incumbent upon us to begin to realistically look at road safety because we cannot improve our overall health indicators without paying key attention to this major issue which has the propensity to derail gains that will be made in our health indicators. A clarion call for action with the Ministry of Health playing a lead role to bring to, to the table all of the key stakeholders to see me why the Brasilia Declaration on Road Safety is not implemented per resolution WHA 69.7 and UN General Assembly Resolution and coming forth with a roadmap for timely implementation. Liberia appreciates the action of the Secretary and endorses the approval of this agenda item. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liberia. Senegal, followed by Uganda. Voilà. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Honorable Ministre, cher délégué, le Sénégal se réjouit de l'inscription de ce rapport lors de cette présente session. Nous avions adopté dans son ensemble ce, ce document et nous allons directement sur les suggestions faites sur quelques points saillants du, de ce, de ce document-là que nous avons analysé en équipe. Un, sur l'inadéquation des lois sur les facteurs de risque liés à la sécurité routière dans la région africaine. Je pense qu'il faudrait, comme l'a dit hier M. le directeur de cabinet, faire un lien très strict entre l'analyse des détriments sociaux et l'absence de ces, euh, l'application de ces, de ces textes-là. Le Sénégal recommande, puisque nous avons des organisations régionales, sous-régionales, nous avons également l'Union africaine, que l'OMS puisse travailler vraiment avec ces institutions-là pour que les directives communautaires qui sont prises au niveau de ces institutions-là puissent être transposées dans nos constitutions et dans nos textes. Mais l'OMS également doit accompagner ces pays-là dans l'élaboration de plans d'action, mais surtout assurer le suivi de l'application de ces textes. Je pense que c'est important qu'on puisse euh, convoquer les textes, mais il faut également que l'OMS puisse accompagner ces pays-là dans le suivi de l'application de ces textes-là. Sur un autre point, c'est sur l'insuffisance de la coordination multisectorielle. Ça ramène toujours les aspects de coordination multisectorielle et déterminants sociaux. Le Sénégal a compris cela et c'est au mois de mars dernier, suite à beaucoup de cas d'accidents au Sénégal, que le Premier ministre a pu mettre en place un comité multisectoriel qui a réuni tous les sectoriels qui sont intéressés par les accidents et la sécurité routière. Et ce comité a pu, en tout cas, élaborer un plan d'action de, 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 conformément et en relation avec euh, le secteur de, de la santé. À ce niveau également, la suggestion qui est faite, c'est vraiment de, euh, demander à ce que l'OMS en rapport avec la CDAO également, puisse accompagner les pays dans l'élaboration des de, de pays. L'autre chose également, pour sur laquelle je vais terminer, c'est faire en sorte que euh, l'inscription des chauffeurs et des transporteurs au niveau des mutuelles de santé nous paraît être une recommandation forte pour que les transporteurs et les chauffeurs puissent être enrôlés dans les mutuelles de santé. Et ça va alléger, en tout cas, les charges financières pour le secteur de la santé. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Uh, thank you very much, Senegal. Uh, I now call upon Uganda. Thank you, Chairman. Road, road accidents, road traffic accidents continue to represent a major development issue, a public health problem, and a leading cause and injury around the world. Uganda has got the second highest traffic death rate in sub Saharan Africa due to road accidents. Lack of road safety awareness through systematic education and awareness campaigns and a scenario where drivers have authentic permits but they are not competent to drive. And then was associated with 
outdated traffic laws are a key challenge for Uganda. Uganda therefore recommends that all member states should enact road safety policies, including key um, on top of it is the law on a legislation on alcohol. Design and roll out road crash data system, enforce driving driver training standards, put up vehicle inspection centers through public private partnership. That's one of the initiatives we are undertaking. Improvement of driver permit issuance process. And then definitely key among them is a multi-sectoral involvement. Advocacy and promotion of public awareness definitely is key. And then we need to improve capacity of our emergency ambulance services in our countries. And this definitely will be able to key in reducing injury and mortality and help in the rescue operations as well as reduce delay in care of the crash victims. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very, very much, uh, Uganda. I see no other contribution from uh, honorable ministers and uh, heads of delegation. Uh, so I will ask for comments, if there are any, from the Secretariat, Dr. Shong. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and all the Honorable Ministers and Delegates uh, for the very useful comments, uh, for the endorsement of the actions, and we've noted the suggestions uh, the, uh, to, to emphasize uh, the importance uh, of alcohol in um, contributing to road traffic accidents, and um, so we'll, we'll revise the background to include that. Um, Honorable Chairperson, I would like to request for permission for my colleague from headquarters, uh, Dr. Etienne Krug, the director of uh, NCD's Violence and Injuries, to make a, um, a short statement. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Krug. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, we're, we're not on track to achieve the objectives neither of the Decade of Action, neither SDG 3.6. We're three years away from the end, both of the Decade and the 3.6 target, which aims at a 50% reduction in deaths and injuries, as pointed out the Minister of South Africa, by 2020. So it's very important we've had this discussion and we've had this paper being adopted here in the Afro Regional Committee. We need to scale up. This is not a mysterious bug or some virus we can't control. This is something we have created as human beings. We have designed our transportation systems in a way that every year they kill and injure and disable hundreds of thousands of people. We need good laws, we've heard it, but we need also to make sure there is enforcement. We need to strengthen safety of vehicles and of infrastructure, and that's the problem. This is one of these topics that requires real multi-sectoral collaboration, so I wanted to commend countries like Senegal, for example, who talked about their multi-sectoral mechanisms, because that's the only way, I think, for us to achieve uh, the progress we need in order to tackle this issue. I was also pleased to hear the mention of pedestrians, bicyclists, motorcyclists. Those are the vulnerable road users that need special attention, particularly in this region, which has a very high proportion of injury and death among those people. Finally, I'd like to draw the attention of all the delegations to the process that has been started to, to develop global targets on road safety. This was requested by the Brasilia Declaration as well as by the UNGA and the World Health Assembly. This process is ongoing. We have just on Monday posted the second discussion, the second version of the discussion paper based on the two uh, web-based consultation that have taken place. And I want to particularly draw your attention to the fact that on 20 and 21 November in Geneva, WHO headquarters will host a formal member state consultation, hopefully to finalize those draft targets before they go to the EB and the WHA. All of you have been invited already to this meeting and I hope you'll be able to attend. But I particularly want to beg, and I'll finish with that, to beg that this does not become a health-only document. We should make sure that before the meeting happens or even during the meeting, 
we have multi-sectoral discussions on those targets so that we don't end up with targets that are only relevant to us, the health sector, but that we have real targets that are relevant as well for ministries of transport, interior, etc. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Regional Director. Thank you very much, Chair, and uh, I'd like to join my colleagues in thanking the Honourable Ministers and uh, Delegates for your very useful contributions to this uh, document. Uh, first of all, I, I think it's acknowledged in the paper that the resources available for this work are not sufficient. This didn't get discussed. So at some point or other, it's not only a matter of convening the other sector. we our sectors. We need to have the resources with which people need to do the different components of the work that needs to be done. I think there is need to talk about that and find out what we can do. It's true that some of this work cross walks with other um, work that we are doing on, on some other uh, major public health problems. For example, the issue of alcohol, we were talking about NCDs yesterday. This can be a common agenda that can serve both NCDs and road traffic accidents. As the meeting has gone on, we have cited al almost every item, the need for multisectoral collaboration and mechanisms to do with this. Um, I'm wondering, at some point we need to find out how it will work for health, because otherwise we're going to have a multiplicity of committees dealing with different issues, and the prime ministers will be totally overloaded by our need for multisectoral groupings for health. So I really, it does demand that we look at how to work on health in all policies, multi-sectoral work in a way that's efficient for the needs of our sectors, sector. But I'd like to very much thank the, the ministers and delegations and, and say that we will incorporate some of the things that you pointed out needed further highlighting in the document. And just plead that let us together find ways to make the arguments for additional allocation of resources for this very important issue. And here, data, we, we've acknowledged in the document needs to be improved, so that's going to be the evidence for making our investment case in, in this work collectively. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, RD. Um, you can see that uh, this is an important topic. In, in my view, we can take this document back home. It's one thing that as ministers and heads of delegation, we can actually go back and try and institute immediately. I, I'm quite convinced that this is quite doable. And then uh, Unfortunately, sometimes the, there's a tussle between the ministries of transport and ministries of justice and police. Uh, so leadership should be within the Ministry of, of Health. And it gives us opportunity to look at emergency services, em, uh, emergency surgery, and even a future fuel levy. So I think, I think let's go back and take ownership. And we implore the, uh, the RD to, to accept that. We, we, it's a small document, but really quite powerful. Um, Having said that, distinguished delegates, is the regional committee uh, ready to adopt um, this document, uh, AFR stroke 67 stroke 13, on the status report on the implementation of the decade of action for road safety in the Africa region, taking into account comments made? It is so decided. Let us move to agenda item 17. And I've noticed that uh, 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 agenda item 17 on the status of reviews, authorizations, and oversight for clinical trials in the WHO Africa region, document AFR stroke 67 stroke 14. I will give the floor to Dr. Felistas Zawaira, Director, Family and Reproductive Health to introduce this document. Dr. Zawaira, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good morning, honorable ministers and distinguished delegates. On behalf of the secretariats, I am pleased to present this technical paper as outlined by the chairperson, document AFR slash 67 slash 14. The paper reviews the status of clinical trials in member states it identifies issues and challenges affecting the quality and timely reviews of clinical trial applications by ethics committees 
and national regulatory authorities, and it proposes specific actions which can be implemented to address the gaps. Clinical trials are important for development of medical products, including vaccines, through systematic evaluations for safety and efficacy or potency in human subjects to support regulatory licensure and wider human utilization. Clinical trials, especially of candidate vaccines, have assumed significance in our region because of the high burden of diseases and large outbreaks such as Ebola, meningitis, hepatitis E, to name just a few. Vaccines and therapies against major priority diseases and conditions have been developed through clinical trials in the region. Despite this progress, timelines for reviews remain too long and oversight is inadequate due to issues and challenges confronting member states. These are inadequate preparedness for rapid initiation of clinical trials under normal conditions and especially of course in emergencies, insufficient country ownership and resources, disparities in procedures and timelines for review, and weak oversight across member states and regions. The paper therefore brings to the attention of the regional committee the needs and gaps in clinical trials regulatory space in the African region as part of product <coughs> development. There are ongoing efforts to address some of the gaps that we have mentioned through various initiatives including the African Vaccinated Regulatory Forum, WHO Tropical Diseases Research, Accelerating Excellence in Science in Africa, the European Developing Countries Clinical Trials Partnerships of the EU, and the regulatory team of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations and others. WHO and partners commit to accelerate the implementation of activities to reduce the review timelines, undertaking needs assessment for benchmarking by the national regulatory authorities and economic groups, and also training to strengthen capacity through the African Vaccine Regulatory Forum and WHO Global Learning Procedures and Opportunities. What is the value proposition of this paper? It is important that an endorsement of a common vision and value proposition on strengthening capacity of clinical trials happen in our region. And what will we as Africa lose by not investing in the capacity to conduct clinical trials under adequate ethics and regulatory of oversight? We will see outbreaks of diseases with no countermeasures, such as Ebola, Lassa fever, or Rift Valley, neglected tropical diseases that are common to us and not the developed world. They have little interest in investing in them and in the new products. So it's incumbent upon us to take care of that. There will be delays in development and access to safe and effective new therapies and vaccines for our priority diseases in the region such as HIV, malaria, and TB. The Secretariat therefore invites comments from the Regional Committee on the challenges in meeting these reasonable timelines, at least within 90 days, for approval of clinical trial applications, adherence to common submission formats, parallel reviews by ethics committees and national regulatory authorities. The Regional Committee is therefore invited to consider and endorse the actions proposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Zawaira. I will now invite comments or questions from the Honorable Ministers, Heads of Delegations. Um, yes, I see Cameroon, Angola, Algeria, Guinea, Senegal, United Republic of Tanzania, Mali. Is that Mali? Yes. Yes, Mali. Liberia, Algeria. Algeria, I think I've mentioned that, Congo, Ke is it Kenya, yeah, South Africa, South Africa. Malawi. Malawi, at the corner, okay, thank you. I notice that this this three minutes is doable. We may have to cut it, but let's just stick to to three minutes for now. 
three minutes Cameroon thank followed you, by thank Angola. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll respect the three minutes. Mr. Chair, Cameroon writes this document and is uh, in agreement with what's written inside. Because in Cameroon, the conditions for clinical trials are well defined. There are three milestones to be achieved and there are five preambles. The milestones are the National Ethics Board, Institutional Ethics Committees, and the National Regulatory Board. Every trial must pass through these milestones. And the preambles are, there must be evidence of phase one and two trials, there must be liaison with national institutions, and there must be appropriate funds and necessary workforce to carry out uh, the trials. And also, uh, there must be good governance, there must be transparency, there must be monitoring evaluation and traceability. And finally, if all this is respected, there is clear opening for any clinical evidence in Cameroon. So Cameroon approves this document because all what I've said are found in this document. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well done, Cameroon, Angola, followed by Nigeria. Obrigado, Sr. President. Nós queríamos sublinhar quatro aspectos que achamos ser importantes na abordagem desse assunto de ensaios clínicos. O primeiro aspecto é exatamente tem a ver com a nova visão que nós em África devemos ter em relação à abordagem à prática dos ensaios clínicos, ou seja, uma nova estratégia. Por outro lado, nós entendemos também que os ensaios clínicos não podem continuar sempre a ter um caráter de emergência, ou seja, que os ensaios clínicos devem constituir parte dos nossos projetos de investigação, porque nós já sabemos quais são as nossas principais patologias em África. Por isso, assim evitaríamos constrangimentos, quer de ordem financeira, quer de ordem organizativa. Por outro lado, devemos criar, entendo, entendemos nós, devemos, devemos criar infraestruturas de qualidade e que sejam funcionais e que os profissionais africanos os peritos, os técnicos, trabalham nessas infraestruturas e assim podemos ir diminuindo a dependência externa em relação à, à, à prestação do, de serviço. Por outro lado, devemos sim salvaguardar sempre os aspectos, os aspectos culturais quando vamos proceder tanto à realização do ensaio clínico. Dito isso, Sr. Presidente, nós, a delegação de Angola, apoia a aprovação desse projeto. Obrigado. Thank you very much, Angola. Nigeria followed by Guinea. Uh, I think uh, your chairman means Algeria. Nigeria, you didn't put up your... Okay. Nigeria. Followed by Guinea. Merci, Monsieur le Président. L'Algérie se réjouit de l'inscription de, de ce point important à l'ordre du jour et félicite par la même le secrétariat pour la qualité du rapport. Comme vous le savez, près de 100 000 essais cliniques seraient conduits chaque année dans le monde, dans 10% d'un pays où on voit de développement et seulement 1% en Afrique. Bien entendu, le but des essais cliniques est d'améliorer les connaissances dans, de, dans le domaine de la santé. Pour cela, des facteurs ethniques ratio, géographique, climatique, environnementaux et alimentaires influencent le comportement des médicaments dans l'organisme de l'être humain et sont autant d'arguments qui justifient que soient menés des essais cliniques et aux besoins multicentriques et multipays. Pour cela, ils doivent être menés dans des conditions matérielles garantissant la sécurité médicale des sujets participants. Dans ce contexte, le rapport présenté énumère bien les enjeux Et les, et les défis qui attendent la région, notre région, concernant ce volet. En Algérie, cette activité a été abordée et circonscrite vers la fin des années 90, notamment par l'élaboration des premiers textes réglementaires et la création d'une unité chargée des essais cliniques rattachés au ministère de la Santé, en plus du Conseil, Conseil national de l'éthique qui a été, bien entendu, euh, créé bien avant. En 2006, Donc il y a un peu plus de dix ans, trois arrêtés ministériels sont venus améliorer cette réglementation et, euh, et notamment pour ce qui est de l'axe lié aux bonnes pratiques cliniques. Aujourd'hui, 
l'activité des échecs cliniques dans, le, dans notre pays est, un, est en constante augmentation d'une fête et, et d'ailleurs à l'instar de quelques pays euh, de notre région du fait d'une meilleure maîtrise liée au nombre croissant des personnels formés, des CRO présentes et de l'engouement des laboratoires pharmaceutiques internationaux mais également nationaux euh, au regard du développement de l'industrie pharmaceutique dans notre pays. À ce titre, les mesures proposées dans le rapport soumis répondent bien aux insuffisances constatées et aux attentes, dans notamment l'appui sur les ressources humaines formées pour l'appropriation de l'activité et l'établissement d'une réglementation harmonisée. D'autant que ces mesures sont dirigées aussi bien aux États membres qu'à l'OMS et aux partenaires. Compte tenu de cet état, l'Algérie soutient le rapport et appelle les États membres à adopter les mesures proposées. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Algeria. It's Guinea followed by Senegal. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Guinée félicite le Secrétariat pour la qualité du document. So, sorry, just just a minute. Um, I, I think there's an important announcement to be made, Dr. Mjigradima. Just a quick one, an urgent one, I think. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Honorable Ministers. If there are any delegates that are on the South African flight, BA or ET flight for this afternoon, the shuttle is ready at the airport and, and at the hotel entrance to ferry you to the, to the airport. Your check-in starts at 10. Thank you. It's already 10 now. Um, I'm sure that they knew, I hope. So let's, let's resume. Sorry, we're going to give you another two, two seconds. Um, Kelly? <laughs> Donc, merci, Monsieur le Président. Je disais donc que la Guinée félicitait le secrétariat pour la qualité du document soumis. Euh, comme vous le savez, à la faveur de l'épidémie de la maladie à virus Ebola, plusieurs euh, études cliniques euh, ont été lancées au niveau national. Il s'agit essentiellement euh, de l'essai sur trois vaccins euh, qui sont actuellement en cours, dont l'efficacité a été prouvée déjà en phase 3 sur le terrain, mais aussi des essais thérapeutiques avec le placement des survivants et avec euh, des médicaments comme le Favipiravir. Euh, nous avons quand même appris quelques leçons de ces essais cliniques on s'est rendu compte que la législation nationale était insuffisante à ce niveau et que notre comité d'éthique avait de faibles capacités euh, à, pour examiner un certain nombre de protocoles. Il y a eu également une faible implication des cadres nationaux dans la conduite de ces essais. Ils n'étaient même pas principal investigateur. Et, mais le leadership national a permis surtout l'essai sur les vaccins Ebola au niveau national. Euh, le transfert des échantillons vers les pays occidentaux pour des examens pose encore des problèmes non résolus et des capacités en matière de biosécurité restent encore à définir. À la lumière donc... Euh, 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 des leçons apprises. La Guinée uh, oh, soutient l'ensemble des minute. mesures proposées dans le document soumis et invite euh, les États membres à l'adopter. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Senegal. United Republic of Tanzania, followed by Mali. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, le Sénégal euh, félicite le Secrétariat pour avoir élaboré le rapport qui nous est soumis. Ce rapport rappelle que les essais cliniques sont importants pour tester l'innocuité, l'immunogénicité et l'efficacité 
des nouveaux produits avant leur utilisation à grande échelle dans la population humaine. Ce rapport nous rappelle également que cela requiert un système d'évaluation éthique et d'encadrement réglementaire qui soit conforme aux standards internationaux. La contribution du Sénégal concerne des ajouts qu'il faut faire dans certaines parties du document. Ainsi, dans le paragraphe 10, nous pensons qu'il faut noter la faible utilisation des technologies de l'information pour plus de rapidité dans la soumission et l'évaluation des protocoles. De même également, dans le paragraphe 11, l'absence de procédures et de normes d'ouverture et de gestion des biobanques euh, doivent également être, euh, doit également être signalé. Dans le paragraphe 12, euh, nous pensons aussi que l'absence de systèmes d'audit qualité, des systèmes de régulation et d'évaluation éthique euh, doit être ajouté au texte. Le Sénégal euh, recommande dans le paragraphe 13 la création de procédures accélérées. Et nous pensons que euh, nous pouvons nous reposer sur déjà des le travail de préévaluation qui avait été déjà fait par l'African Vaccine Regulatory Forum, la VAREF, et qui peut vraiment aider les pays à gagner du temps dans l'examen des documents soumis pour des essais cliniques. Euh, notre expérience dans ce domaine, au Sénégal, nous disposons d'un guide du chercheur et de la procédure d'évaluation éthique qui a intégré les bonnes pratiques cliniques. Enfin, euh, dans le paragraphe 14, nous recommandons le renforcement du euh, réseau régional Avaref à travers son comité de pilotage et ses groupes de travail techniques. Euh, nous pensons effectivement qu'il est important de mettre en place un fonds d'impulsion de la recherche et ceci à travers la mobilisation des ressources domestiques et l'appui des partenaires. En conclusion, Monsieur le Président, le Sénégal a bien apprécié l'élaboration de ce rapport et euh, accepte son adoption par le comité par l'Assemblée. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Senegal. I suggest that you, you submit your, uh, your amendments or suggested amendments to the Secretariat for the various paragraphs that you mentioned. Um, United Republic of Tanzania, followed by Mali. Mr. Chairperson, Tanzania welcomes the report on statute of reviews, authorizations, and oversight for clinical trials in the WHO African region. We would like to inform that reviews, authorizations, and oversight for clinical trials in Tanzania are under two institutions, the National Institute for Medical Research and the Tanzania Food and Drugs Authority. The National Institute for Medical Research is responsible for registration, review, and authorization of clinical trials proposals while the Tanzania Food and Drug Authority issues clinical trial certificate upon fulfillment of such requirements. We take note, Mr. Chair Prosom, the observations and challenges raised in the report. Insufficient country ownership, resources for clinical trials, limited biobanking capacity, infringement of intellectual property rights and data usage, as well as slow implementation of reviews leading to long timelines to mention just a few. We fully appreciate the magnitude of the challenges in conducting trials, and Tanzania has put in place strategies to alleviate some of those constraints, and here they are to be shared. The first is training staff at postgraduate level in the health research, ethical review, introduction of an induction course to members of the health research ethics and review committee, as well as introduction of an online submission of proposals through an electronic platform called RHI NO, Research for Health and Innovation Organizer. Mr. Chairperson, we hope that through the strategies that have been developed for Tanzania and the proposed actions in the report, we should be able to address the challenges adequately. And Mr. Chairperson, Tanzania therefore endorses the report with its proposed actions. We thank you. Thank you, United Republic of Tanzania, Mali, followed by Liberia. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le Mali félicite le secrétariat pour la concision 
et la précision des documents soumis et la directrice régionale pour avoir inscrit ce point à l'ordre du jour qui paraît un point très important pour le Mali compte tenu de la persévérance de nos équipes de chercheurs. Sur le, sur le président, le Mali a entièrement souscrit à la situation décrite dans ce document, situation relative aux sectes cliniques dans la région africaine de l'OMS. Le Mali dispose d'une loi régissant la, la richesse biomédicale sous l'être humain assortie de textes d'application. Les dispositions de cette loi s'appliquent aux recherches sur les personnes vivantes, les embryons et fœtus, les matériels biologiques d'origine humaine, les renseignements personnels identifiables, les cadavres, les embryons ou fœtus issus d'interruption de grossesse ou d'avortement spontané et les enfants morts nés Cette loi permet justement de réguler la conduite des essais cliniques sur le territoire national. Monsieur le Président, le Mali s'engage à mettre en œuvre les mesures proposées aux États membres et exhorte l'OMS et les autres partenaires de diligenter la mise en œuvre des recommandations les concernant, particulièrement l'identification des besoins des autorités nationales de régulation, les propositions de formation adéquates et l'harmonisation des procédures. Sur ce, le Mali soutient l'adoption du, du présent document. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Mali. Liberia followed by Algeria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We've uh, heard Algeria, so it will be followed by Congo. Liberia followed by Congo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Liberia is very excited and grateful to the Secretariat for the excellent work in underscoring the need to address this important item, which has the propensity to cause a major catastrophe if the right framework is not put in place. In disaster preparedness, pre-preparation is cardinal to deal with any disaster, but consistency and coordination is very critical. The various issues and challenges as stipulated in the document cover the key components for a safe clinical trials, but at the same time, the various safety nets need to be put in place so as to avert any mortality or mobility. It is my plea that WHO Afro takes the lead in establishing an effective framework that will be adaptable to our region. In other words, consistency is the key to avert unforeseen crises. Remember, the weakest link will always be sought after. Hence, a consistent framework beginning today will help us. Liberia appreciates the major first step in the right direction and approves its adoption. Thank you. Thank you very much, Al uh, Liberia. Um, Congo, followed by Kenya. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le Congo, comme euh, des autres pays, a une forte conscience que les essais cliniques sont indispensables pour l'inéquité et la sécurité des produits de santé que nous utilisons sur le continent. Le Congo a un comité d'éthique qui est miniature et qui ne couvre pas tous les secteurs. C'est pour cela que le Congo propose que l'OMS coordonne une mutualisation effective des efforts dans les essais cliniques pour les pays éligibles, qu'il arrive à une totale harmonisation des statuts et procédures des comités d'éthique de tous les pays de la région africaine afin d'éviter les disparités qui existent et qui peuvent nuire à l'accès aux essais de certains projets pertinents. Il est donc important que l'OMS et l'Union africaine s'associent afin de favoriser à terme la création d'un organe de coordination et de régulation au niveau régional et sous-régional. Les essais cliniques effectués depuis la flambée de l'épidémie de virus Ebola ont montré que la région africaine reste faible et que les travaux sur la recherche des vaccins et des sérums sont réalisés par des organismes extérieurs sur nos données. Il est important que ces recherches permettent à l'Afrique 
de bénéficier aux fruits de ces essais à travers la diminution des coûts d'accès aux vaccins et médicaments. L'OMS doit appuyer les organes de régulation et de réglementation des recherches de nos États. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, Congo, uh, Kenya, followed by South Africa. Thank you, Chairperson. Kenya is pleased to take the floor on this important agenda item and thanks the Secretariat for developing the report. Kenya has made great strides in implementing activities aimed at initiating and conducting clinical trials within our country. The country has a number of well-developed and experienced sites for carrying out clinical trials. As you may be aware, Kenya is one of the countries selected for malaria vaccine trials. Kenya takes note of the proposed actions recommended in the report for adoption and would like to propose one additional recommendation for consideration. There is need to enhance and improve the safety and clinical monitoring of trial subjects during and after the clinical trial period. Following the granting of approval for clinical trials, there is need to ensure that there is regular monitoring for adverse effects to ensure the immediate and long-term health of study subjects is guaranteed. In terms of legislative milestones, Kenya has a newly enacted Health Act 2017, which has definite provisions for promoting research in health, including, including clinical trials. We are also a member of AVRF Working Group, and our National Medicines Regulatory Authority has made provisions for granting clinical trial authorizations in 48 hours in the event of emergency situations. With these remarks, Chairperson, Kenya fully supports adoption of the proposed actions and recommends their endorsement by member states. I thank you. Thank you very much, Kenya. Uh, South Africa followed by Malawi. Thank you, Chairperson. South Africa <coughs> also congratulates the Secretariat <coughs> for the document presented on the status of reviews, authorization, and oversight for clinical trials in the WHO African region. And we believe this document is very comprehensive. It is acknowledged that clinical trials are the backbone of modern medicine, making them the center of medical innovation and scientific breakthrough. They play a pivotal role in successfully moving candidate drugs and vaccines for discovery into the hands of the population who need them. There is a growing pressure for new treatments and prevention, uh, Chairperson. Uh, for instance, HIV and TB. Actually, if we don't find any vaccine for TB in as short a uh, time as possible, we are very unlikely to eradicate TB by 2030. It is also acknowledged that one of the challenges to product development is the inadequate capacity of national regulatory authorities and ethics committees to review and approve clinical trials applications in a timely, transparent, and effective manner. The strengthening of national medicine regulatory authorities to allow effective fulfillment of their mandate are as important today as in the 1960s when the world faced the thalidomide uh, crisis. It is acknowledged and embraced that the regulatory system strengthening is one of the World Health Organization's mandates. Therefore, Chairperson, South Africa supports all efforts to allow for collaboration and harmonization among regulators. We therefore support this document and all the proposed uh, prog uh, uh, plans, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, South Africa. Malawi, followed by Botswana. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, for giving Malawi the floor. Uh, Malawi welcomes the report and appreciates the importance uh, clinical trials, uh, the importance role clinical trials play in evaluating the safety and efficacy of new products prior to wider human uh, utilization. When I first read the document, I thought I uh, fully understood what we are talking about until I read paragraph 4 in the introduction. 
which talked about uh, WHO uh, publishing guidelines for clinical trial of uh, traditional medicines in the African region. I know, I don't know what the experience is in the other countries that uh, the traditional healers are very reluctant to have their products going through phase one and uh, two. Most of them would want, want to go straight on to phase three. So we've had situations with them. So, and uh, most of the members of the research ethics committees are at least qualified to uh, review those protocols. So uh, uh, we, maybe the document needs to be clear on that one too to see whether we're referring to the Western type of uh, clinical trials or the clinical trials involving traditional medicine. The second point I wanted to bring up was on uh, 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 dependence on external funding. I remember uh, at a meeting we had a few years, in some meeting we had a few years back in Abuja, followed by one in Accra, there was an agreement that we need to set aside 2% of the health budget for, uh, for health research. So uh, it's up to countries to budget for this 2% so that part of that money can be moved on to uh, clinical trials. Uh, Malawi uh, endorses the, uh, the document and the proposed action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malawi, for mentioning that important point on traditional medicine. Um, Botswana, finally. Th thank you very much. I'm sure because I haven't spoken, I can multiply three minutes by however top many topics we've had this morning, uh, if you indulge me. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you very much, Chairperson. We commend the Secretariat for a very well-written uh, document. The report articulates why clinical trials are important for us. In the African region, we need for the clinical trials. We believe that they're key, and therefore we believe there's a need for them to be managed um, appropriately and in an effective manner. Botswana has been actively engaged in a number of clinical trials that have over time increased in complexity. In the planning and implementation of these, there have been a number of lessons learned that I believe apply to our region and I would like to share them. These include, but are not limited to the following. Lack of skilled human resource to serve as principal investigators as well as in other roles. Insufficient in-country regulatory approval capacity and oversight the relevance and applicability of the studies for the country, intellectual property rights that follow thereafter, absence of a legislative um, environment or an ap appropriate legislative environment for the trials, monitoring of subject past study and benefits thereafter, and the last one is really data ownership with the various partners and donors, and I think this is a matter that we need to have focus on uh, going forward. Chairperson, the proposed actions are very much in line with what uh, we need to be doing. We are currently working in Botswana as, um, on a human and health research bill that we plan to submit to cabinet in the coming year. Uh, this will uh, include a legislative, no, let me just leave that. I'm working on that so that we can really uh, focus on what I have highlighted as, as issues. And in conclusion, really, is just to endorse the, uh, what is proposed by the Secretariat. Wholeheartedly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Botswana. Um, Zimbabwe. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, Zimbabwe congratulates the uh, Secretariat for the clear and comprehensive, uh, uh, well uh, crafted document. Um, in Zimbabwe, we have a well structured uh, legal framework uh, for research and uh, clinical trials. Uh, starting with the ethical committees, the institutional review boards, um, and the Medical Research Council, and also a National uh, Research Act, which is uh, administered by the uh, highest office in the land. And we have indeed participated in a number of uh, uh, clinical trials, uh, including HIV. Um, we also note uh, the uh, various issues that have been uh, raised in the document, and we are particularly uh, would like to add our voice to item seven uh, that talks about uh, authorization um, in cases of outbreaks and emergencies. Uh, we would like to recommend that there be a clear standardized 
and harmonize the guidelines and procedures uh, uh, in to authorize uh, uh, clinical trials uh, during emergencies. In other words, we need guidelines for authorizing, uh, inspecting, and monitoring of clinical trials in emergencies, and uh, to ensure on one side uh, the safety of, uh, of the subjects, and also uh, allowing on the other end the rapid uh, availability of uh, uh, products uh, in an emergency situation. Uh, we otherwise uh, um, really appreciate and support uh, the document as it is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Zimbabwe. I, I see no other uh, from, from, from countries or delegates. So I will now ask uh, the Secretariat through Dr. Zawaira to make a response. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much, Honorable Ministers and Heads of Delegations, for all those very valuable comments that you have made and concerns that you have raised. Um, in terms of capacity building, as you can see in the document, and as I mentioned in my introductory remarks, <clears throat> the African Vaccine Regulatory Authority, which is under WHO, in collaboration with other partners, the work that we are doing and that we have been doing and that we will continue to do is to build the capacities of the ethical committees and the national regulatory authorities. So that is work in progress. As we head around the table, different countries are at different levels of what is happening with those bodies in their countries. We have taken note of the issue about safety post licensure of any of those products that will have been uh, that will have gone through clinical trials and definitely that is something that countries need to be vigilant about. There was a proposition that we need to work better with the African Union. We already are working with NEPAD and the African Union around the harmonization of the ethics committees and we actually will continue on that. I think Mr. Chairman a lot of it were comments that came from the floor but I think there was also the issue about data ownership. I think we have always complained as Africa that people come and research us, then they take all the data out of the continent and we never hear about that. And that's where we need very strong uh, regulatory authorities, very strong government ownership that will say you can't research us without us, you can't take our data out without giving it back to us. So I think this is where the strength of governments is really critical wherever clinical trials are happening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Zawaira. Uh, distinguished delegates, uh, thank you all for your comments. Is the original committee ready to endorse the actions proposed in the document AFR stroke 67 stroke 14 on the status of reviews, authorizations, and oversight for clinical trials in the WHO Africa region, checking into account the comments made. The actions are endorsed. <laughs> Delegates, let us move on to agenda item uh, 12 on the reducing health inequities through intersectoral action on the social determinants of health. Document AFR stroke 67 stroke 9. I will give the floor to Dr. Joseph Kabore, Director, Program Management, to present this document. Dr. Kabore, you have the floor. Monsieur le Président, Excellence, Messieurs et Mesdames les Ministres, Chef de Délégation, Distingués participants et collègues, au nom du secrétariat, j'ai le privilège et l'honneur de vous présenter le document AFR bar RC67 bar 9 intitulé « Réduire les inégalités en matière de santé par l'action intersectorielle sur les déterminants sociaux de la santé ». Il s'agit d'un document technique dont l'objectif est de mettre en exergue les inégalités en matière de santé dans la région africaine et partant proposer les actions intersectorielles nécessaires en vue d'agir efficacement 
sur les déterminants sociaux de la santé pour réduire ces inégalités et partant améliorer la santé des populations. Le document dans sa structure commence par souligner les engagements mondiaux et régionaux des États membres, réaffirmant la nécessité d'une action intersectorielle durable, de l'inclusion de la santé dans toutes les politiques et la promotion des services de santé intégrés centrés sur l'individu. Il présente ensuite quelques exemples d'inégalités en matière de santé dans les domaines de la sécurité alimentaire et la nutrition, l'eau et l'assainissement, l'éducation et l'accès à la vaccination, etc. Monsieur le Président, honorable ministre et chef de délégation, les inégalités en matière de santé sont injustes. Elles sont injustes, d'autant plus qu'elles sont évitables. Et il importe de s'engager résolument pour les résoudre. Nous sommes convaincus que l'engagement fort des États membres en faveur de la couverture sanitaire universelle et les objectifs de développement durable constituent une grande opportunité pour agir efficacement sur ces inégalités. Le document présente des exemples réussis dans certains pays où des, exemples, où des actions concrètes ont permis de réduire sensiblement les inégalités en matière de santé. Cependant, des difficultés nombreuses et réelles demeurent, et le document indexe entre autres l'inadéquation des législations des cadres réglementaires pour promouvoir la collaboration intersectorielle, et cela a été discuté au cours des temps passés, en vue de lutter efficacement contre les inégalités en matière de santé. Quel mécanisme de coordination faut-il mettre en place et à quel niveau Comment rendre ce mécanisme véritablement fonctionnel et durable Un autre exemple de difficulté est l'absence de données probantes, désagrégées et actualisées sur les inégalités en matière de santé dans la région africaine. Pour terminer, le document propose des mesures visant à résoudre ces difficultés subventionnées. Monsieur le Président, j'ai l'insigne honneur de soumettre le présent document au comité pour examen, commentaire et pour son adoption et je vous remercie. Financer 
les plans d'action sur la propre santé dans toutes les politiques et une seule santé. Puisque je sais qu'il y a beaucoup de pays qui ont fait ces plans d'action-là. L'OMS devrait vraiment pouvoir euh, appuyer ce contexte-là. Aux autres aspects également, sur les points 15, sur les textes législatifs et réglementaires, nous recommandons le renforcement de l'engagement politique et susciter également l'implication et la collaboration avec des organisations comme l'Union africaine, la CDAO, l'IMOA, euh, pour une transposition de ces directives-là dans nos, dans nos textes. Ensuite, enfin, pour le point 18, renforcement du système de santé, un changement de paradigme s'impose à nous et placerait la promotion de la santé au rang de priorité en lui allouant les ressources nécessaires. Puisque lorsqu'on analyse les ressources financières et leur répartition, euh, la composante promotion de la santé... Uh, one, one minute, one minute. Ok, la promotion de la santé n'a pas suffisamment de ressources et on sait que la prévention compte beaucoup dans la diminution des charges en matière de, de santé. Et au Sénégal, nous avons le plan d'urgence développement communautaire qui a beaucoup appuyé dans ce sens-là en mettant en construisant des postes de santé l'accès aux soins de santé et le renforcement du système de santé. Enfin, nous invitons la conférence de bien vouloir intégrer ces recommandations dans la résolution finale. Merci beaucoup. Um, thank you very much, uh, Senegal. I, I suggest also that you submit your, your suggested amendments for, uh, I, uh, for, for number 14, 15, and 18 to the Secretariat. Um, Madagascar, followed by Madagascar, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président, de m'avoir donné la parole. Tout d'abord, Madagascar félicite le Secrétariat pour la qualité de, de ce rapport de, de, donné par le, le Secrétariat. Ensuite, nous voulons attirer votre attention que Madagascar, c'est un grand, la grande île de Madagascar, est surtout euh, composée de 80% de zones inaccessibles, des zones montagneuses inaccessibles, et environ. 45% des centres de santé de base se trouvent à plus de 5 km de, de la population en général. Ainsi, nous avons apporté comme solution à ce grand problème d'inégalité, d'accessibilité, une approche par proximité. Ainsi donc, il y a des centres d'accélération de la réduction de mortalité materno-infantile de, de presque 23 nouveaux centres dans tout Madagascar, surtout au niveau de ces zones inaccessibles, euh, en travaillant avec le, le, euh, les privés surtout, des CSP, environ 20 CSP par an que nous construisons au niveau de ces centres de santé vraiment éloignés et des centres chirurgicaux, centres hospitaliers, districts chirurgicaux également pour remédier à ce problème d'égalité, d'inégalité. Enfin, nous renforçons le système d'information sanitaire en, à, en donnant à ces centres vraiment éloignés, ces en enclavés, des tablettes capables d'être reliées au niveau central et de façon vraiment euh, presque spontanée. Je vous remercie de votre attention et nous soutenons donc l'adoption de ce, ce point de l'ordre du jour. Thank you very much, uh, Madagascar. Côte d'Ivoire, followed by Niger. Côte d'Ivoire, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, la Côte d'Ivoire remercie le secrétariat général pour l'inscription de ce thème à l'ordre du jour. Dans sa volonté de réduire les inégalités dans le domaine de la santé et par l'action sur les déterminants sociaux de la santé, elle a entrepris certaines actions, notamment l'accroissement du budget de l'État alloué à la santé et l'allocution budgétaire destinée aux structures de niveau périphérique. L'institution de la couverture maladie universelle et la gratuité ciblée pour les femmes enceintes, les patientes, les enfants de moins de 5 ans et les patients en urgence médico-chirurgicale. L'amélioration de la scolarité de la jeune fille, surtout dans les régions déshéritées, déshéritées. La promotion de la bonne gouvernance. Mais malgré les progrès réalisés, de nombreux défis existent. Il s'agit no 